Hey, it's been a while. But if you're new here, I'm remaking Rainbow Six Siege in Minecraft, and after my last video blew up, the pressure got to me a little, which is why I've been gone for so long. But don't worry, I put in the work and got it done. With features like 15 different operators, a brand new fully functional map, and so much more. This part really is bigger and better than the last one, which you should totally check out if you haven't already by the way. Anyway, let's get into what I've been up to. Last time I covered quite a few different aspects of Siege. Soft walls, barricades, cameras, drones, some items like the frag, impact and flash grenades, a whole GUI and config system, and even a map, Oregon. There was a lot. But there were also some things that I intentionally didn't include because I'm only one person and it takes a long time to code these things. But that left me with a pretty solid list of things to do this time around, including yet another map. But before that, there's some things I gotta fill you in on. Immediately after releasing the last video, I started updating the mod pack, with a whole bunch of bug fixes and even some new mods. Which I should actually talk about. As you know, I made a point of trying to make this all in vanilla, with the exception of Vix point blank which I have to use to avoid making my own guns. But a lot of people didn't really seem to mind, and some of you were even asking for more mods, and since I was already distributing the map as a mod pack, I figured a few more couldn't hurt. So I added a few, including voice chat. Suggested in my Discord server, it's pretty self-explanatory. Though, I did add a separate voice chat setting which has attackers and defenders separated into to groups so they can't hear each other. Presence Footsteps and Sound Physics Remastered were again suggested in my Discord server, and it's an amazing combo that makes footsteps way louder and gives all sounds an echo based on where you are, not just footsteps, which really helps when listening for the enemy team. Slabby is one that I discovered later on while making the map, which I'll get to in a second, but it adds a ton of brand new slabs for almost every block as well as vertical ones. But that's not why I got it. Well, kind of. It also adds vertical mixed slabs, which if you remember, would have fixed a big issue in part one, where I wanted double layered walls that were only one layer. So with this new mod, I got to work on the new map immediately. And I had a few contenders for what the second map could have been. Chalet, cafe, or coastline. Let's see if you can guess which one I chose based on the time lapse. Alright, time's up, it was Coastline. But choosing Coastline presented some interesting challenges. See, Oregon was dusty and dingy, which lent itself to Minecraft blocks and my own personal building style really well. But Coastline is all bright, modern and sleek, which was new territory for me. And when I went through the blocks, there weren't a lot that matched the criteria, so I had to get creative. And personally, I think I got pretty close and struck a good balance with a few compromises here and there. But overall, it came out pretty good. Now, the gadgets, gizmos, and gameplay are what I spent most of my time working on, and procrastinating. But there's quite a lot of them, so let's go through them. Starting with the operators. In my remake, I called operators special gadgets, but the basics still apply. Only one person can have the same special gadget. You get the idea. And as for how many I've made, well I've made 7 attackers and 8 defenders, and they're on screen now. Now, I don't have time to go through all of them, but I would like to touch on Cade, Thermite and Thatcher, because that leads us into reinforcements. Now, the reinforcements can be accessed in the GUI, like a lot of other things, and all you gotta do is look at a soft wall and uh, click it, and it will reinforce as simple as that and if you want to enhance your reinforcements you can use the enchanting claw item which if you throw at them will enchant the wall and if I as an attacker come over here with uh, some EMP grenades and EMP the wall I can then put down a hard breach and Blow it up! And next up is Castle. I've put interaction entities above all the doors on both maps, so that if you hold right click like this, you can place a... B <laughs> Hang on. You can place a barricade. And if you're holding the special stone barricade item, you can place... You guessed it. 
a stone barricade. Now these have about two and a half times the health of a regular barricade, so it takes a lot of hits, as you can see. Hey, welcome, follow me. Oh, uh, watch your step, that's a poisonous cobweb. In here, we have the humble frost mat, which if, oh, hang on. Now, if you're knocked like me, there are a few ways you can revive yourself, either by a teammate, or if you're Doc or Finker, you can revive yourself like this. Obviously, that wasn't all the operators and new items, but I guess you have to find those out for yourself. But I did add some fan-favorite regular gadgets, like barbed wire as you saw, C4, breach charges, and smoke grenades. As for some smaller things I've added, I'll go through as many as I can remember, though I'm sure I've forgotten some. Down but not out and proning. As you saw, frost mats can knock players, but so can a lot of other things and other players. You can't use guns or utility while you're knocked, with the exception of Doc's crossbow and Finker's redstone surge. You can also prone now. I added a crawl mod that can be toggled by pressing G. Also, if you're proning and open the cameras or drones, the husks that spawn in your position now become babies. Don't ask me how they do it, because I don't know, but it does help you stay hidden. Next up, edging. About two hours before I'm recording this, I remember that I should probably finish the edge of the map, because it's been looking like this for a while. So I spent a couple hours building out the front and curving it down to a little pier section. But what's a pier without a boat? Brilliant question. That leads me into the defender and attacker spawns. On Oregon, I made separate spawns for each team to choose their guns and utility items in. So I did the same for coastline, building a boat for the attackers, and I just kind of put the defenders in a cave. But you may notice that there are no guns. Instead of putting the guns, utility, and special utility at each spawn, I just put them in the GUI. Is it lazy? Yes. Do I care? Not really. Moving on. And here's the big one. Possibly the biggest headache that I was procrastinating. Hit detection. If you aren't aware, up until now, guns couldn't damage or interact with the barricades, soft walls, and other gadgets. They could only damage players. But after a lot of thinking, I found the best way to do it. I'm using a library called Iris, not to be confused with the mod of the same name, but it's a ray casting data pack. And basically, whenever you shoot a gun, it shoots a marker entity along with the bullet. I can then run a command off that marker and damage anything within like a quarter block radius. I don't think it's perfect, but it's pretty consistent with the testing I've done. And it's better than nothing. I then went through all the utility I made and made it so this new system would work on them. Which means that cameras finally have hit detection and can be broken and disabled, along with every other gadget in the game. I also spent a lot of time fixing my code because it wasn't very clean, but to be honest, I think that's it. There were a few glaringly obvious things I missed, namely repelling, and I might add it one day, but I've also tried my best to make all areas of the maps accessible, so it's not that necessary. Let me know if there are any other things I should add in the comments below, and in my Discord server, also below. Oh, and if you want to see everything that I didn't talk about in this video, you can check out part one here.